The fastest way to accomplish anything is to model someone who has already had the same success that you are after. You can go around trying to figure out everything by yourself, trying to come up with every new idea yourself, and you will slowly, slowly make progress towards your ideas. But until you recognize that success leaves clues, that whatever the thing is that you're trying to accomplish has already been solved by thousands of people, that all you need to do is model their success until you realize that, you're gonna constantly stay struggling, making slow progress, knowing that you're capable of more. So I first learned the power of modeling success with my first business. I was 19, 20, not making any money, 300 bucks a month, low confidence, filled with self-doubt, not getting results. And I told my partner that I quit. And the thing that saved me when I hit my lowest point was I am not the first person to try to solve this problem before. Maybe my specific scenario, yes. Biotech software, you know, from Toronto, who's done that before? Nobody, but a software company get into a million dollars? Somebody's done that before. How about I just look at their success and try to emulate it? Need motivation? Watch the top 10 with Believe Nation. Hey, it's Nina Carmichael. We made this video is probably because you're the most ambitious person in your circle. You know you're capable of more and you get the punch by surrounding yourself with the best. So today, let's learn from one of the best, my husband Evan Carmichael and his top 10 rules for success. So I first learned the power of modeling success with my first business, where I was struggling. I was, I was 19, 20, um, not making any money, 300 bucks a month, low confidence, filled with self-doubt, not getting results. You know, I turned down high paying jobs to do this thing and own 30% of a company that seemed to be going nowhere. And I told my partner that I quit. And the thing that saved me when I hit my lowest point was I am not the first person to try to solve this problem before. Maybe my specific scenario, yes. Biotech software, you know, from Toronto, who's done that before? Nobody, but a software company get into a million dollars. Somebody's done that before. How about I just look at their success and try to emulate it? And so the only person I could think of off the top of my head was Bill Gates. So I looked at Bill Gates and how we got started and it was through partnerships and I applied that lesson to my business and in a short amount of time had my first deal for $13,500. I felt like a rich man, you know, I felt like holy cow, and to go from 300 bucks a month and, and saying I quit to now having a deal in place for 13 and a half K and more important, the strategy that I could use again and again, again was, was life changing for me all because I modeled success. And that was again, when I was 19, 20. So now what have I done for the past 20 years is just model success. What is my YouTube channel about? What is this video about modeling success? Why have these people behind me? It's not for you. It's for me. I want to model success. I, they're constantly pulling me up to a greater spot. Whatever problem you have, has been solved, not exactly the specific minutia, but by modeling Bill Gates, it took me 80% of the way. You still have to figure out that final 20%, but most people are trying to figure out the whole hundred. That's the problem. I was struggling when I was trying to figure out the whole hundred all by myself. I just come up, coming up with new ideas, new ways, new innovation, but nothing worked. All you have to do is figure out that last 20%. And so look to your heroes, look to potential mentors, whether you know them in person or not, they've done it before. They can teach you success leaves clues. You don't have to go through this alone and you can ramp up your success really quickly. Rule number two, fix your thinking. How you think about the problem is the problem. Most people are locked into losing thinking, finding all the reasons why you won't win. If you're the ant, think about how you can kill the elephant. If you're the elephant, think about how you can kill the ant. The problem is not the problem. How you think about the problem is the problem. So I used to think that introverts couldn't win. I used to think that to be a good speaker, to have a YouTube channel, to, to be an entrepreneur, that introverts can't win. And for the longest time, I hid behind the faces on my website. So before even starting YouTube, I started on my website. It was called evancarmichael.com. <laughs> Had, didn't have a better name at the time. And I profiled different successful entrepreneurs. Basically what I do on YouTube, but on my website because I wanted to share the stories. Modeling success saved my business and I wanted to make it easier for other people to be able to get success on their own as well. So learn who's done it, apply those strategies, make it work for you and let's go. And so I always hid behind the faces. I remember my first banner, I had Howard Hughes, a big Howard Hughes, uh, Oprah Winfrey and a couple of people and people kept asking me, well, where's Evan Carmichael? You know, the, the website's off your name. You're putting this together. What's your story? And I thought, well, who cares about my story? I mean, sure. I built and sold 
my first business, but it's nothing compared to Howard Hughes and Oprah Winifrey, these people who've done great things. And, and it kept coming up over and over and over again. Translate that to my YouTube channel, Evan Carmichael was still the number one requested top 10. And when I first started doing top 10s, we did Kanye West, shout out to Kanye there on the wall, and, and then a bunch of other people, people kept asking for mine. I'm like, well, what do you want mine? You mean, again, what have I done compared to Kanye West? And I always hid behind the fact that I was an introvert. And so I don't want to share my story. Nobody's interested. I'm shy. I'm, I'm the wallflower. I don't go off and try to make myself the center of attention. I don't like, you know, hanging out with people. <laughs> and so I had this story that introverts can't win. It wasn't until I reframed it and thought, you know what, introverts can win in communications because we're better listeners. I'm a great listener. As much as you might think I love talking and, and making these videos and seeing the speeches that I do, what I love doing more than that is listening. And I think that's how you win as an introvert because it's not about you just sharing, 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 talk, 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 look at me. It's you're trying to help. And I've met some amazing introverts who are on a huge mission and want to have a big impact and have to fight with themselves to get out of their comfort zone and have the spotlight on them instead of just being behind the scenes. But they're all great listeners. They become great communicators because they're great listeners. And so the problem wasn't that I'm an introvert. The problem is how I thought about the problem of being an introvert. Rule number three, take control of your decisions. Every time you say, I can't, you're teaching yourself that you suck because you've quit, because you've given up. It's not your fault that you can't do it. It's your work or your school or your family or all the other commitments that you have, but not your fault. Nope, nope, nope. Change your I can'ts to either I'm going to or I choose not to. That's how you take back control of your decisions and your life. So I recently, listened to this Chinese song and I got obsessed with it. I got obsessed with it. I was playing it all day long and I just, I loved, I don't know what they're saying. I don't know what, you, I don't know what the, the words mean. I just loved, I loved it. I loved it. I go to bed and lyrics start coming to me. Rap lyrics in full sentences, right? The first one comes in. Okay, wake up. I'm in bed. I'm lying in bed. I'm trying to sleep. You know, it's 11 o'clock. Trying to sleep, trying to sleep. Pfft, idea, rap lyric come. Okay, I write it down. Again, rap lyrics come, write it down more and more and more write it down until three in the morning i haven't slept yet ideas just keep coming for this song that's like i need to make a rap and then what comes into my head is that what you're gonna make a rap <laughs> it's easy to get locked then into i can't mode i can't do this i can't start that i can't do a rap i, I didn't go to school for that I I not that you go to school for rap you know i didn't rap growing up i don't have musical talent Right? That's not what people know me for. That's not what people expect from me. I can't rap. That's where most people quit. But instead, I decided I was gonna get up at three something in the morning, go to my computer, finish writing out my lyrics, and then I spent the day rapping. And that night, finished the video, sent it off to uh, Christina, my editor, to put it together, and the next day we released my rap video. Now, maybe you love it, maybe you hate it. It's gotten some decent responses. It was tons of fun to put together. And most importantly, I taught myself in all of these things, these are all great micro moments to teach yourself that you're amazing. Whenever you say, I can't, and you do it, that's how you build self-confidence. That's, that's the birthplace of self-confidence, self-love, self-respect, is taking something that you think that you can't do and just trying not even doing it full out because I don't expect my rap to go off and win any kind of awards, right? But I tried it, I did it, I released it. Expect to suck at the beginning, that's okay, it's normal, it's part of the process. But in those moments of I can't and then turning them into something that actually exists is where your genius will come. I look at my top 10 series and it's partly why I have Kanye on my wall because the first video that I made was on Kanye. First top 10 was on Kanye, it was five years into my YouTube career. I did a response to my friend, Mark Drager from Phantom Media. And I said, initially, I can't do this. Like, I, I can't make a video now on this. I have all these other commitments. I have a full day ahead of other stuff that I'm supposed to do. And said, no, I did action. I'm just gonna do it, forget it. I'm gonna make it. And I didn't expect it to do well. Luckily, it actually did. And then that became this whole thing of making, I don't know how many top tens hundreds, maybe a thousand. I don't know how many top 10, how many top 10s have I done? I have no idea. But it started off as just idea. Trust your ideas. Know that they're amazing. 
Stop saying I can't to yourself. This is where you need to take control of your head and your heart. You have to make decisions with your heart and then use your head to figure out how to do it. Anytime you're doing something new, super important. Anytime you're doing something new, I'm making it, I'm gonna make a rap, I'm gonna make a top 10 video, I'm gonna do anything outside my normal thing, right? Same for you. Anytime you're doing something new, it doesn't make sense because it's new. What is brand new doesn't make sense. You're creating something new. And so your head, your logical brain that's designed to keep you safe, doesn't understand it. Its job is to, to protect you and says, don't do that. You can't do that because one, it's never been done and because we have all these reasons why it's not possible for you, not just anybody else, for you. Like, you can't do it because you haven't done it before. That's what your head says. Your heart can create something new. Your heart creates art. Your heart makes up a world that hasn't existed before. And so at the very beginning of many projects, your head and your heart are against each other. Your heart's saying, I want to make this. Your head's saying, you can't make this. And so you end up staying stuck in limbo with all these ideas, never taking momentum because your, your head and your heart are fighting. You've got your foot on the gas and the brake at the same time, never moving, knowing that you're capable of more. And so you make the big decisions in your life with your heart. And then you rally your head to say, okay, we're doing this. I'm making the rap video. I'm making the top 10. You're going to do your crazy idea. And then your head says, Ooh, okay. They're serious. <laughs> let's figure out how not to die doing this, right? Let's figure out how to actually make it work. So you make the big decisions in life with the heart and then you use your head to figure out how to go out and accomplish it. Rule number four, learn to reframe. If you change how you feel about something, you change how you act. The problem is most of the time we don't catch our feelings. If you're feeling negative, angry, frustrated, depressed, it doesn't matter what the thing is that you're trying to accomplish. You're not going to give it your all and you're not going to get results because of your negative emotional state. If you don't start changing how you feel, you're never going to make progress on the goals that you set for yourself. So one of the things I love doing whenever faced in a negative situation is say it's the best. It's the best. I'm wearing this hat says Fanta because friend of the channel, Mark Drager pointed out to me when I was saying it's the best that I'm a reframer. I'm reframing. I never heard of the concept before. Reframing means you take this negative situation and then you spin it, you reframe it so that it's positive, so that it motivates you, so that it's exciting, so that it pushes you forward instead of it being a negative thing that is all encompassing and depressing and brings you down. And he said, well, you're always positive because you're just a reframer. And it, he has his anagram and I'm a number six or something. I don't know. He, he, he can give you more details. You want to know what number you are and what it means. Go follow Mark.Drager on Instagram and ask him. But I don't think that's something that's just in me. I think everybody can learn how to do it. Everybody can learn how to reframe. You take whatever negative situation that's in front of you and say, this is the best. Right now, this is the best. Where this came from was I was on an airplane from Vancouver to Los Angeles. And that's a five hour flight, give or take. And I had to sit next to this really smelly dude and there was no other option. I had to stay on the plane. I had to make my flight. I had to speak at this event. The only other option was get off the plane. And he was really smelly. I'm sure he didn't want to be smelly. I'm sure that wasn't his, you know, intention or ambition. It just happened. Probably had three stopovers, you know, hadn't showered in, in however long and just, he stuck. And in my head, I'm trying to find solutions. There's no solutions. And so I'm upset. I'm complaining, you know, the 15 seconds of back and forth say, this sucks. I can't believe it. And then here's what happens in my head. I say, this is the best. This negative thing that's in front of me right now, this is the best. This is my chance to show myself what I'm made of, right? And so he's sitting right here next to me. I look over and just breathe it in. Breathe that in. Breathe in that smell. Breathe it in to show myself that this is not the limit, that this one dude is not going to ruin my day. And I feel great now about myself because self-confidence comes from doing difficult things. And I just did something difficult. And that's where it's the best came from. It was a, it was a quick trigger to myself to say, this is the best. It's the best. And now it's become this thing that anytime I'm faced in a really negative situation that feels overwhelming, impossible, just want to complain, find somebody to blame and say, it's your fault. No, this is the best. This is my chance to show myself and the world what I am made of. And so you can flip it for yourself. What is so overwhelming, so impossible, so crazy that is bringing you down? You look at your calendar, you look at your list of emails and it's just depressing. Great. This is the best. If you believe like I believe that your purpose comes from your pain, if you believe that the thing that you struggled with the most in life becomes your calling for the rest of your life, 
the time that you struggled and suffered the most as a human, your, your purpose for the rest of your life is to help other people who currently are who you used to be, then that thing that happened, that, that massively negative thing, the most painful moment in your life actually is the best because it's going to allow you to serve hundreds, thousands, maybe millions of people through your purpose. So that negative things in front of you, tell yourself it's the best. Also, to make sure you're actually taking action after watching this video, I've designed a special free worksheet just for this video. The worksheet will highlight all of the lessons learned in this video, as well as pull out our three favorite learnings and quotes that will inspire you to actually do something. The worksheet will also give you space to write down what your key takeaways are and your specific plan of action to make sure you're getting results. If you want the worksheet designed specifically for this video, absolutely for free there's a link in the description below go click on it and start building the momentum in your life and your business i'll see you there rule number five change your calendar most people have not taken control of their schedules you wake up like an accident start responding to other people's emergencies and help other people build their dreams instead of you building yours it's time for a change you deserve better and this video is going to show you how I think one of the biggest reasons why so many entrepreneurs don't take enough action is because when you get motivated, you don't do enough. You feel the motivation, you feel the boldness, you feel the confidence, but you're not taking enough action. You're not doing enough. I remember going to my first Tony Robbins event. This is before uh, I knew Tony one-on-one, -on -one. before I did the interview with him on my channel. I just went to see what would the event be like. I I've, I've seen so many different videos of so many different people and I felt like, you know what, for most people going to their event, it'd probably be the same as just watching on YouTube. But for Tony, I felt, you know what? I think his event might be different. There's something that tells me by going to his event, it'll be different than what I just see on YouTube through the content. And so I went and I went with my wife. I went with three people on my team. I paid for everybody to go out and went to our first Tony Robbins event. And at the end of the last day, if you've never been to Tony Robbins event, it's on fire, you're, you're motivated, you're jumping, you're dancing, you're hugging, you're high-fiving, you're, you're breaking through limits, it's, it's amazing. And by the end of the last day, you see everybody in the streets, you're pouring out, everybody's all pumped up and energized, like, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. I remember one of the people that I brought with me, he's like, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna do all this stuff. And he's like yelling and so fired up and excited. He's like, well, what are you doing, Evan? I'm like, I'm looking at my calendar because this is why so many people fall off. You go to an event like that and then you fall off because you're not making it consistent. Success is habits. So whenever you decide to make a change, you have to, at least for me, I look immediately to my calendar. So if my goal is now I wanna be a big YouTuber, great. When am I gonna make videos? It's gotta be in the calendar. If it's not in the calendar, it's never gonna happen. And so anytime you wanna make a meaningful change, you have to default to thinking, what am I gonna put into my calendar? Because success is habits. And so it's great to be motivated. Maybe these videos do it for you. Maybe events, maybe books, podcasts, awesome. You're getting it from somewhere. You feel motivated, great. Show me in your calendar where you are spending the time to actually make the thing happen. Otherwise, you're just living off some fumes. You know, you, you get motivated for a day or two, it feels amazing, and then you fall back down to normal. If you want that dream life, you want that next step for yourself, it's gotta come from changing your habits, changing what's in your calendar to make sure that what you say you want out of life, you're actually working towards making that happen. Rule number six, build trust. If you wanna become a millionaire or influence a million people, you need to learn to build trust. This is where you can really win as an entrepreneur because people have a really hard time trusting big companies to do the right thing. So this is where you win. You win by not trying to be exactly like the big companies. You win by showing that you actually care and will do the right thing by the customer. So bringing it to a YouTube world as an example, I think everybody should be responding to all comments. One of the things that I believe in is every comment we try to get a response to. Every comment gets a response. Every comment gets a response. And at the beginning when you're doing a YouTube channel, it's easy. I, my first video on YouTube, it took me a year to get three comments. I made a video. Within one year, there were only three comments on that video. The first comment was my mom. Thank you, mom. The second comment was my older sister. Thank you, Alexandra. And the third comment was from some random dude. A new star. Somebody discovered my channel, <laughs> right? One year, three comments. Those are pretty easy to respond to, right? It's super easy in the early days when you're not getting comments. If you're getting a comment a day, a comment a week, a couple comments a day, it's easy to respond to. What happens when people scale is they stop responding to comments. 
because they don't know how to scale the business. Because at the beginning, they're doing everything themselves and it's, it doesn't take up a lot of time. But as you start getting more comments, it starts to take up more time. I get hundreds of comments every day on my, on my YouTube channel. I can't respond to every single comment personally myself. If I could, I could, if I did it, then I wouldn't do anything else. I wouldn't be making this video because I was spending all my time responding to people's comments, right? That's the process. But just like any other business, when you start a business, you're doing everything yourself. If you start selling flowers on the street, you're doing everything, right? You've got to find the flowers, you've got to sell the flowers, you've got to distribute the flowers, you're doing everything. As you grow and as you get a flower store, then you bring on a team. Right? And you have people who are selling flowers for you and opening the store for you and cleaning the store for you. You're still doing work, right? You're doing more important work. You, you can't do all of the tasks in the business at all times. If you're always doing everything, you're never gonna scale. And so I believe that bigger YouTube channels should hire a team to respond to comments. I have an awesome guy on my team named Velko, who you'll see responding to a lot of comments and he'll save the comments that I need to see. So if there's feedback or suggestions or improvements, I wanna see them. If there's criticism, I wanna see it. If it's just saying, thank you Evan for the video, amazing, I feel the love. I don't need to see all of those comments that come in, right? I'll, I'll, I'll sort through some of them, respond to some of them, but that's not gonna be the best use of my time every day because then I'm not making videos. And so make that equivalent for yourself. At the beginning, it's easy to show heart, easy to show care because you don't have that many customers because maybe you only have one customer and so you can show them the love. But as you scale and grow, how can you continue to do that? Whether it's you doing that most important element yourself because that's the thing that drives it, or you have people on your team that really show that love and support because you wanna make sure the customer feels respected and appreciated. It's really easy to build trust in a one-on-one -on -one situation. It's harder as you build and scale your clients. And so you need to build and scale your culture alongside. Rule number seven, work hard. Hard work is your ticket in. No matter where you come from, what you look like, what your skills are, hard work is always the ticket in. The odds might be against you. Awesome. Now what? Quit on your dreams or keep working hard? How you answer that question will change your life. So I have an agent in New York and when I first started the agency, I almost didn't get in. Uh, I didn't get in because I'm a weird case for them. My agent now, he looked at me back then, and this must have been six or seven years ago by now, and he said, Evan, I, I love your message. The problem is you're not a very good communicator. And that hurt at the beginning because I had already done some speaking gigs. I'd already been making videos for three or four years. You know, I'd had hundreds, if not a thousand videos already under my belt, and here he is saying that I suck at communicating. And he said, the people that he typically works with are people who are already in media, who have tons of experience, who are great in front of the camera. They need help refining their message. He said, for you, I love your message. You've got a great message. You just suck at being able to communicate it. I'm like, oh, wow. And so, okay, great. Well, where do we go from here? And he said, I'm going to take a flyer on you. I don't normally do this. I I'm going to take a flyer on you and see where you go. And I, I didn't want to waste my opportunity. I didn't even know that you could get an agent as a, as a business person, as an entrepreneur, as a speaker. I mean, I guess I heard of speaking houses, but an agent, I thought more entertainment or sports, not for business. So I didn't want to lose this opportunity. You know, I didn't want to regret not giving it my best. And so I said, okay, great. Tell me what I need to do. I'm the worst right now. Awesome. I, I don't have the skills that everybody else here has. How can I get better? What do I need to do? Tell me. And he said, okay, so your first challenge is I need you to make a bio video. I, want, I need you to tell your story, a foundation story video, make it 20 to 40 minutes long and record it. And I'm gonna look at it and I'm gonna give you my feedback on it. Okay, great. So I recorded it the next day and it was in the morning. I recorded it, sent it to him. He gave me feedback and then at lunch, I recorded it again. He gave me feedback. I recorded it again in the evening <laughs> and I did it 30 to 40 times. It was a lot. Over, over the course of however many days, you know, uh, uh, 10 to 12 days, I guess, uh, I recorded the video over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. Every time you give me feedback, I do it again. Feedback, do it again. And I got better. And I got better. And over the course of a couple months, when I was making three videos a day, practicing, sucking, but just practicing and trying to get better and listen to feedback and trying to improve, I quickly became the best case at the agency. I quickly became the number one person 
from, from views, from subscribers, from best practices, like copy what Evan's doing. Now I'm being brought on to help them with their clients and train some of them on how they can get better on YouTube and build their brand. From being the worst, from being the guy who almost didn't get in. Because the people who are joining them, one, maybe had bigger egos, but also were having a hard time finding the time to make a video a week. And if they're not making a video a week or having a hard time doing it, and I'm making three a day, even if I suck, I'm gonna get better. I'm gonna outpace just because I'm willing to work, just because I'm putting in the effort. You might not have the skills, you might not have the talent, you might not have the looks, you might not have what you think you need to have. How does an introvert build a huge audience and, and spread a huge message and be famous on YouTube? I don't know. I mean, I'm working on it. Join me on my journey. <laughs> we'll figure it out together. That was my agent's concern when I first got started. And I'm, I'm breaking the mold and doing things in a way that haven't been done. And you can do the same thing through hard work. Hard work doesn't guarantee your success. There's a lot of people who work really hard and never win. A lot of people who work 12 hour days and are doing minimum wage jobs. They're working hard and they don't win. You have to work hard and you have to work smart, but it's not one or the other. The people who were in the agency were working smart, but we're making one video a week. I was working less smart, <laughs> but making three videos a day. So I'm gonna get better, I'm gonna get smarter, I'm gonna make it faster, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you what I can do. Hard work is always your ticket in, and one of the biggest problems is people just aren't working either hard enough or smart enough. You just want it too soon, and, and you can be impatient, and it's amazing, but better than being impatient with the results is being impatient with yourself. Most people are impatient with the results. Like it's not coming fast enough. Like where are my subscribers? Where are my views? It's not happening. My first video took me a year to get three comments. And the first comment was my mom, the second was my sister, and the third was some random dude, right? A year to get three comments and two of the people were my family. You're impatient with the results. What you should be is impatient with yourself. When you're not getting results, when it's not happening, audit yourself. Are you putting in the work? Are you doing enough work? Are you working smart enough? Are you applying the right strategies? Get more frustrated with yourself and your effort more than that the results aren't there. Because if you woke up every day and did that equivalent of making three videos a day when other people are making one video a week, you will eventually win. It might be slower than you'd like, but it's always slower than you'd like, but you will eventually win because hard work is always your ticket in. Rule number eight, develop new skills. You will never lose in life if you have valuable skills. You won't lose your house, you won't lose your car, you won't lose your clients if you have a skill that brings people value. The economy can collapse, the algorithms can change, but as long as you have a skill that solves problems for people, you will be safe. So I'm seeing this a lot in the YouTube world now. Uh, I have a new course out uh, helping people get to a million subscribers on YouTube. We can link up the description there if you want in. And people are saying, well, should I? still do YouTube, is it too late? Like uh, YouTube won't be here in five years or 10 years, or maybe it's gonna be the next thing that should hop on. It's not about the platform. Like right now it's winning the platform that is currently winning. You need to crush it, right? Like YouTube should be your home. If you're trying to make an impact, you're trying to be a thought leader, you have a message to spread, YouTube has to be your number one place. It just has to be right now. Otherwise you're, you're not making a smart decision. But whether YouTube is still around in 20 years, five years, doesn't matter. Because the skill set that you learn, you can take anywhere. The ability to communicate, you could take to any platform. You could take to the next thing. I don't anticipate YouTube still being around in 20 years, but my ability to make videos, talk into a lens, that's not gonna go away. That can serve me for life, right? Whether that's VR Evan or hologram Evan, you know, coming into your living room, that's, that's gonna be me. That's gonna be amazing. I'm pumped, I look forward to it. Any algorithm change that people are freaking out about, anybody who's complaining about the economy going down or the algorithm changing, you've already lost. That's a losing mindset. When I was first starting my YouTube channel, uh, I always saw the algorithm as a chance to win, right? You should see, if you're a small creator on any platform, YouTube, Instagram, anything, and the algorithm shifts, that's your greatest advantage. You should be cheering. You should want more algorithm changes. If you look at a, a traditional, established, boring market, uh, it's hard to win. Real estate could be hard to win, right? Financial markets can be hard to win. It's not that it's not possible, it's just hard to win because there's a lot of people who have, who have decades of experience and know more than you, and it's hard to close that gap of experience. With social media, with YouTube, every time there's a big algorithm change, the people who are experts at the last thing, they're crying instead of adjusting. 
That's how you win. That's how you get ahead of them. That's how you become the top dog is because you're going to go learn the new algorithm when everybody is wishing and hoping that the old algorithm comes back. And this happens for every platform. It happened for Facebook. Every time they changed your algorithm or updated the, the feed and what was shown there, people always freak out and complain and they sign, they want petitions and like, let's go back to how it used to be. Don't sign those petitions. Don't jump on that bandwagon. That is loser thinking. Never, ever, 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 ever do that. It's loser thinking. And that's how most people think. That's a mindset shift that I want to make for the collective, but more importantly for you. That whenever there's a big change, embrace it, go all in on it, learn it. That's how you're going to leapfrog everybody else. So the faster the rate of change, the more you should be cheering. I still get pumped for an algorithm change. Me. I mean, now I'm at, now I'm closer to the top, right? I mean, I don't know what the top is. I got 2 million subscribers and 300 million views and all these channels. I still love it. Anytime an algorithm change comes out, I'm still pumped. Train yourself. Like a change is coming, I'm pumped. Get excited. Because there's still people who are ahead of me or even the people below me that I'm competing with. For, for attention and for space. Uh, if they're sitting there complaining about how it's changed and they're, and they're dropping in their views, awesome. I'll pick up those views because I'm gonna learn what the new algorithm is all about. Same thing with the economy. When the economy crashes, everybody who's complaining about how it used to be, they're not gonna win. It's comforting to join a club and wish things to be how they used to be, but we're not going back to that. So the faster you realize that and make improvements, the faster you can learn and actually build a great business. Some of the greatest businesses in the world were built in recession, in depression. That could be you if you decide to be. Let's hop back to skills for a second. I look at Jake Paul, Logan Paul. They started on Vine, right? Vine was, was their claim to fame. They had tons of success in making these super short videos. Vine gets shut down, right? Boom, gone. This is a don't put all your eggs in one basket. I think that's loser thinking too. It's loser thinking. They went all in on Vine and, and then Vine got shut down. Oh no. What did they do? They moved to YouTube and started crushing it. Millions of subscribers. Look at their growth on YouTube over the past, I don't know, two years, three years. Blew up. Why? They didn't just come out of nowhere. They had the skill set. They had the skill set that they learned from doing the thing, right? The skill set to make a good video, they then brought to a new platform. If YouTube goes away, you're learning the skill set of how to communicate, how to make great videos that whatever comes next. People were freaking out about the FTC coming in and cop on YouTube. Okay, so if kids aren't able to get content on YouTube, where are they gonna go? Go be there. Instead of trying to fight what is already happening, go be at the place where the kids are gonna be. Embrace the change. That's where you, that's where you can win. When everybody else is fighting and angry and screaming and yelling and complaining and wishing that it used to be or quitting the platform and getting upset, go be where they're gonna be. It's, it's easy, it's a simple win. Most people don't have that mindset. It's why most people lose. It's why most businesses can't evolve. Most, most businesses shut down. It's people very rarely transition from one platform to another, from one business to another, even though they have the skill sets and capabilities to do so because they don't have the mindset to do so. People who crushed MySpace, very few of them are still around on different platforms. Look at, look at Hollywood. The Rock is doing it. Will Smith is doing it, moving from Hollywood films to YouTube. Where's Brad Pitt? Where's George Clooney? Like they're in a dying industry. They should be embracing YouTube. They don't want to. They have the skills. They have the skills. It's transferable. You don't think George Clooney could come in and crush YouTube if he wanted to? Of course he could. Calling you out, George Clooney. Let's go. Make it happen. Right? It's just about picking up the skill set. That will keep you safe in any environment. But it's also having a mindset to follow through and try the new things instead of complaining about the changes that are currently happening. Rule number nine. Stop complaining. The easiest way to win is to do work that you love. Making a new video is easy for me. I've done 6,000 plus videos. I still love them. I still enjoy it. But there is a chandelier sitting in the trunk of my car right now that I have no interest in installing. I have, I have no idea how to install a light. I have no interest in learning how to install a light. And so I've asked my friend Mark Drager from Fanta to come and help install the light for me. If you're doing a business that you don't know and that you don't love and you think it's just going to be easy money, newsflash, it's never just easy money you are going to lose. You have to go through what I call the blinders test. Now blinders are things that people put on horses. So there's those black patches that they, they put here on the side of the horse so that the horse doesn't get distracted. So the horse isn't like going all over like this. All they can see is what's in front of them and it forces them to just focus and go in front of them. Now side note, apparently they actually have this for humans too and some tech companies are using them where they have blinders for humans. That seems a little crazy to me, but listen, if blinders help you focus, 
then by all means, go for it. But you need to pass the blinders test. So what is a blinders test? For me, it's those moments in time where you have absolute clarity for what you need to do, where you know where you wanna go, where you have direction and purpose, and this is the window that you need to jump through. For me right now, it's YouTube. Yes, I've been on the platform for over 10 years, but this is a special moment in time for YouTube right now, for Evan Carmichael plus YouTube right now. I'm hitting it on strides. We've got, I don't know how many channels right now, a lot, too many maybe, but I wanna have 100 channels. This is a moment in time. YouTube's not gonna be around forever and it's gonna morph and it's gonna become something else and I'm gonna have different interests at some point. This is the moment of time that you need to then push hard. I see opportunities as windows. There's this window that's in front of you right now and the window's open, but it's not gonna be open forever. At some point, that window of opportunity is going to shut. And that's when people look back and say, I had, I, I could have done it. And, and that other person, they made so much money off of my idea. It wasn't your idea, they did it. The only difference between you and the people who are winning is they started, they did it, they take action every single day. There's no reason why that person can't be you. You have to jump through the window with full force and put your blinders on and stop thinking about everything else that's around you. That's if you have absolute clarity and direction. Now, there'll be other moments in your life and I think, I think life moves like this. I think you'll have moments in life where you have absolute clarity and purpose and direction. And there'll be other moments where you're not so sure what to do. And then you have to open up the funnel again. Sticking to the, the blinders when you don't know what you're doing is not a great strategy. This, this happens to a lot of entrepreneurs where they have focus for their business, but then they lose interest in their business. And then they bought themselves a job and they're too afraid to get out of that business because of what it means, because of the opportunity cost, because of everything that they've, they've sunk into the business, because people might say, well, what a failure if they close now. And they should have been out of their business three years ago, but they're still going. Don't let that be you. You're never gonna win doing work that you hate. If you don't like your business anymore, you need to adjust it or you need to move on, dump it and move on to something else. If I stop liking videos, I will just decide. No more videos happening. Sorry guys, maybe sell it to somebody else or just stop because I'm not gonna win doing work that I hate either. And so if you feel your foot kind of pulling out of the water, while you still have some interest, move on to the next thing. And so when you know what you wanna do, you're focused, hyper-focused, that's all you're doing. When you don't know what you wanna do, you open up the scope. And that's okay. And I think everybody will go through these phases in life. You will have absolute clarity. And so you need to go off and do instead of finding all the reasons why you can't do. And when you don't know what you want to do, don't stress out and worry that you don't know what you want to do. Try a bunch of stuff. Say yes to everything. Pay attention to the feeling. The most important thing when you're trying something new is do you love the process of it? Not, is this gonna be your next big opportunity? Did you love the process? Even though you suck doing it. I suck making my first video. I love the process. I sucked when I first learned salsa dancing. I love the process. You're supposed to suck at the start. That's okay. You don't need to get instant results. If you love the process, you will win. If you got instant results, but you don't love it, you're never gonna win. It's just never gonna happen. You're not gonna win. And so, depending on where you are on this spectrum of absolute clarity to having no idea, dictates what your action should be. When you know what you need to do, stop making excuses, stop having justifications, and just go off and do the damn thing. And if you don't know what you wanna do, then explore. Stop feeling sorry for yourself, stop complaining, it's okay. Explore, you will find the thing that then you can focus on until the next time you expand it. Rule number 10, love the process. A good question to ask yourself is, do you actually love this? Do you want it badly enough? I love making videos. I sucked at the beginning. I'm still working to get better. I've gotten better over the you know decade I've been on YouTube. I still look forward to it. I still love it. I still work every week creating content for you guys. We're putting out six videos a day across the different channels now. It's, it's wild. It's crazy. And I still love it. We're putting in the work, I'm putting in the work, my team's putting in the work because we still actually love the process of doing it. So, so many entrepreneurs quit and give up because you'll say you'll do whatever it takes, but you're not going to. If you don't actually love the process, you don't actually love the work, you will not do whatever it takes. You will only force yourself to do something that you hate for so long until you give up and quit. So big reason why entrepreneurs don't put in enough work is because you just don't love it enough. If you're not happy right now, it's probably because you're not growing. Humans want to grow, we want to learn, we want to improve, we want to get better, we want to feel like we're making meaningful progress somewhere. And when we feel like we're learning and growing and the work that we do matters, we feel great, right? Have you felt great when you learned a new skill, when you, when you helped somebody out, when you felt that the work you were doing was meaningful? It felt amazing. 
But if you have too many days in a row where you feel like it's too hard, it's too big, you're not growing, you're not learning, there's, there's no hope, that leads down a really dangerous and negative path, not where we want to be. And part of why we become entrepreneurs is because we want to grow, right? Because we don't want to have a crappy, boring job working for somebody else, wasting our talents away. I remember my, my, I didn't have that many jobs, but I had a landscaping job, which was super boring, just every day, just rolling out grass. And then I had a data entry job where this really turned me off of the corporate world where I was doing the work of, we had six people, five people on my team, and I was doing more work than all of the others combined. And I didn't take lunch breaks. I just, I just kept working. And my boss wasn't happy that because I was um, overhead lighting, gave me headaches. I used to have to bring in some snacks like food or uh, popcorn or carrots or something. So I didn't get crazy headaches. And uh, my boss didn't like that I was eating uh, a snack while I was working. And I got into trouble and almost got fired even though I was doing more work than my entire team combined. And it just really turned me off of the corporate world to realize, hey, this, is, this doesn't make any sense. I wasn't growing. You know, I wasn't learning. I wasn't improving. And so you can examine your own life. If you feel like you're in a rut, chances are you haven't learned anything recently. And so we can, we can plan for this. You know, you can change your schedule so that you can focus on learning. You can put it into your daily calendar. And this is where I think it becomes the, the greatest benefit, my greatest tactic or strategy for you, for myself, is schedule in learning, schedule in growing. So for me, it's my own videos. You know, I make these videos, hopefully for you, that you learn and improve and something sparks for you, but I make them for me. I make them for me because I need it, because I, I need to be around people who are doing big things. And that the, I know that every day there's a video for me. You know, <laughs> it's, it's gonna be positive, it's gonna be uplifting, it's gonna spread belief, it's gonna be motivational or inspiring, it's gonna be tactical. And I know that on my channel, I'm gonna get content that I want. And so I've hired a whole team and built the whole business basically around making content that I want to watch. And thankfully enough of you guys want to watch it as well, that it, it, I can build a business and have a team. But if I didn't, or nobody else cared about it, I would still do it for me. You know, it may not be as fancy, it may not have as much intros and all that stuff, but I would still have it for me because I need it. And so we tend to catch these things too late because it's not part of our habits and routines. So if you notice you go to an event or you watch a video and you get all inspired and you're, you got energy and you're working and things are amazing, cool. And then have weeks or months gone by and you realize, uh, what happened to me? What, how, how did I fall off the horse so quickly? What, where did my energy go? Has that happened to you? Chances are it's because it wasn't scheduled. You know, part of the entrepreneur roller coaster is because we're, we're bouncing from one high to the next without having any scheduled in learning and growth. And so my challenge to you would be to try to figure out how can we schedule in learning and growing every day? And so it starts with figuring out, okay, what medium do you like the most? You know, for me, I like videos. I like being able to see stuff. It just makes it so much easier for me. I'm a visual learner. Before YouTube was a thing, I learned from books. That was the best thing available at the time. Now I still have a habit of reading 10 pages at least a night, but I, I don't get most of my learning from books. I get most of my learning from videos. But for you, maybe it's videos. If you're watching this, maybe it's books, maybe it's podcasts, something. Like, where do you get the best learning? And then the great thing about where we are right now is there's so much content. There's so many people to learn from. There's so many people creating things out there that you can go and learn from them. You know, if I, I look at an Eric Thomas or an Oprah Winfrey, they have a similar message, just a different delivery style. And so whatever you want to learn, chances are somebody's already making content on it. And so just go and find them. And think about who you're following right now. Like do an audit of who you follow right now. Who you following on YouTube? Who you following on Instagram or TikTok or what podcast you listen to or what books are you picking up? And how many of those people that you're following or subscribed to actually make you feel 
ambitious and hopeful and better about yourself and give you strategies and light you up and feel like you're learning and growing, right? That's the whole point of this. We're trying to make growing and learning a consistent habit. So how many people that you're following actually make you want to learn and grow? And how many of them are you just mindlessly scrolling through? You know, when you load your Instagram or your YouTube and you're just scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and two hours have gone by and not only have you not learned anything, you feel worse about your life because now you haven't been productive. You know, you've just kind of mindlessly entertained yourself, but it wasn't even that entertaining. You realize, what just happened to the past two hours of my life? Has that happened to you? Cool, unfollow those people. It's not that they're bad people, just that content doesn't light you up. And then start to be around the people who do. And the easiest way is through content. So if it's my channel, hey, good news, we got content every single day for you. <laughs> You'll never run out of Evan Carmichael content to watch. But it could be somebody else, it's somebody else in marketing or business or entrepreneurship or personal development or whatever category you're in to subscribe to those people and be around them as much as possible and watch your videos every day, schedule it in. For me, I go for a walk every morning, call it my Believe Walk. I just like getting some sun on my face and fresh air and getting out of the home and it just gives me some perspective and a little bit of motion and helps me set up my day. And then I'll, I'll have a video going from my channel. And um, every morning will be somebody else. It'll be Elon Musk or Oprah Winfrey or Mel Robbins or Tony Robbins or Gary Vee or Tom Billy or whatever. And that's what we do is pull the best clips that I would learn from and then we share it with everybody else. But that's a part of my daily routine. And I've, I've seen my own growth and development and learning and bravery and courage and momentum and consistency be directly contributed and correlated to the content that I'm consuming daily. And so step one is to unfollow and unsubscribe from the people who just make you waste time, feel worse about yourself, get envy, or just mindlessly tune out. And step two then is to figure out, I need to make learning, you need to make learning, growing, a part of your daily habit. And so where in your calendar can that fit? If it's over breakfast, if it's a morning walk, if it's a afternoon lunch, like where in your calendar can you put learning from your preferred style, video, podcast, books, etc. learning into your daily calendar. If you did that, your life will change. If you did that every day for the next year, every day, if you did that, if you scheduled that in and you actually did it and you, you watched a video, read a book or listen to a podcast that inspired you, said, you know what, I can do this. I can do more. I can be more. I can accomplish this. I got to stop thinking small and stop doubting myself and stop telling myself that I suck and I can't do it. I can do this. Like if you felt that energy every day from watching a piece of content that you intentionally put into your habits and routine every day for the next year, your life will totally transform. You will be a, a totally different person, which then allows you to serve more, to help more, to make more money, to guide more, to be a leader more, all of it, all of your ambitions and dreams, and everything that you want is all possible, but you have to factor learning and growing into your daily consistent habits and routine. Focus on one idea and make it work. Focus on one business model, focus on one revenue stream, focus on one social media network, and make it work. So many times we're focused on too many things, we're distracted and our entrepreneur ADHD kicks in and as a result, nothing happens for all the people who are telling you to have 13 different passive income streams because if one goes away, you still have all these other 12. Most of the people who start up doing that make zero money from all of the passive income streams. You're making $10 a month, $4 a month, $7 a month, where instead if you could focus on one thing and maximize it, and make it amazing and put your energy into it, you will see exponential results. I look at social media as an example, and I just finished this training where we did the seven day built to serve challenge. It was amazing. Had so many awesome new thought leaders come into the program. People have got a big message, want to serve. And one of the questions I kept getting asking is, how do I be on every social media platform? How do I be everywhere? How do I get started and just blow up everywhere? And it's like, you don't, right? The answer is don't, don't, don't try to do that. If you are the person right now who is trying to be everywhere, look at your social media accounts. Chances are you're sucking everywhere. Chances are not, not you suck as a human, just the results aren't there. 
the effort's not there, the energy's not there because you're so forcing yourself to just get out there and create content and be on all the platforms that you also have a million other things that you have to do. And so as a result, you're, you're creating really mediocre content, content that people aren't interacting with. And if people don't like what you're putting out, it's not gonna lead to results for your business. And so much, 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 much better. It doesn't mean that you can't be there, you know? It doesn't mean that at some point you can't be there, that as you build your brand and you get bigger and you hire a team and you have more money that you can start to do this. But much better at the beginning is to figure out what is the one platform? What is the one revenue stream? What is the one business model? The one thing that if I focus on that thing, it's going to lead to results so then I can scale. Entrepreneurs have a hard time with this because we want to do so many things. We have our ADD brain going on and we don't want to just do one thing. We also feel like it is limiting for what we want to do, right? If you have a big vision, a big mission, a giant goal for what you want to accomplish, doing just this one little piece of it feels too small. The way that I would structure it and think about it is, this is just a sequence. You still get to do everything. You still get to do it all. You just have to go in order. You have to create a sequence that the thing that you need to focus on at the beginning of your business, whether it's your revenue stream, whether it's a social media success, whatever it is, what you have to figure out is how do I start to as soon as possible get a sustainable business for myself so that I can quit my job, if you have one, so that I can bring income in for myself and my family, so that I can start to afford to hire a team, even if it's part-time or one person, so you can scale up your company, so that I can then go off and do all the other things. Because some of your ideas are, are amazing and huge and require more people and time and effort and energy, and some of the ideas can get started a lot faster. And so if, if you want to go and accomplish your big goal, your big dream, your big mission, then it's important to think about the sequence of things that instead of doing everything all at once, and as a result, all of the results being mediocre, focus on the one thing that if you push that lever, you really maximize that thing. You could start to make more money. You could start to have more impact. You can start to have more reach. You can start to see more success that then allows you to bring on more people to help you build and scale. For me, we've got 37 people on the team now, and I can do so much more, you know, because we got team than if it was just me by myself doing everything. And so in building my mission, I want to solve the world's biggest problem, right? People don't believe in themselves enough. And so in building that up, I need people, I need help, I need support, I need team, I need, I need a lot more than what I've got right now. But in be able to build a business that can bring in money, then I can afford to hire team that helps me accomplish a lot more things and take on a lot more projects. But if I was at the very beginning of what I was doing right now, I would not be doing most of the things that I'm doing right now. I'd still be accomplishing and going after the same mission, but I'd have to pick one thing to focus on. Pick the one thing at the beginning that I think I could make some money doing this so that I can live, I can, I can pay, you know, rent, mortgage, I can pay my internet bills, <laughs> I can pay for some food, not, not living, you know, fancy life, but just being able to live and survive so I don't have to have a job. And then I would start thinking, okay, how do I then scale this one thing that I'm working on to build up to the point where I can remove myself or at least take some of the pieces off so that I can hire a team to help build and scale and grow. If I look back at my YouTube journey here, I did everything at the beginning. You know, I, I, uh, I filmed it, I researched it, I edited it, I did all of it. And it took a crazy amount of time and I made a lot of mistakes and I did a lot of stuff that I probably shouldn't have done. And just by focusing on that thing and making content and creating videos, it then allowed me to make a little bit of money that then I could hire my first part-time editor that then turned into a full-time editor, that turned into a second editor and a research person, that turned into someone helping me with the thumbnails and the graphics. And it, it continues to build up and scale, but everything I was doing myself in a mediocre way, but getting it done to then be able to scale out a team. And so most people are just stuck doing too many things. You're stuck, like look at what you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis. Look at your calendar. You have a limited amount of time, right? You have a limited amount of time. There's only so much you can do. In, in a day, in a week, you have other responsibilities. Maybe you have a job, maybe you have uh, family, kids, uh, health, 
um, that you have to look after. You know, th there's a certain amount of time that you have that you can dedicate to this thing. That time needs to go into the right efforts. And again, it's great to have that big mission and big goal and big dream. But if you have a limited amount of time every day or every week, and you are trying to create 13 passive income streams with that limited amount of time, no one of the streams ever gets enough energy, enough effort, enough of your mind space, enough of your creativity, enough of your love to ever become anything. And so you're diversifying way too quickly. You're diversifying way too soon. And apply that for anything that you're working on. Apply that to your, your business and the, and the opportunities that you're chasing, the partnerships that you're looking at, the things that you're saying yes to, the social media networks that you're trying to be on. Do yourself a favor. Don't try to be everywhere. Not yet, right? Just understand there's a sequence to things. And you can make it so much easier for yourself to have more impact, to make more money, to have a bigger influence, to be more proud of yourself, to start getting more success and more results and more momentum. So much easier if you just sequence it out so that you don't have to do everything all at once. You don't have to feel the, the handcuffs and the restriction of saying, well, I, I don't want to do this one thing for the rest of my life. This is where it gets you know, entrepreneur ADE kicks in, right? And we don't want to be locked in. I don't want to do the same thing forever. Well, you don't, you won't do it forever. That's, that's not the point. The point is not to do this one thing forever. That if you took these 10 opportunities in front of you, you could do all 10. You could do all 10, just not all 10 at the same time. Because if you do all 10 at the same time, none, none of them are going to work out. And often it's a small opportunity that can pay you more quickly that can start to build the momentum for you. So if you have your list of your 10 opportunities in front of you, 10 things that you could do, great. Look at what order should I go in so that I can start making money and start building momentum. One last quick example. I look at a lot of thought leaders, a lot of people who have a message, a lot of people want to be speakers and authors and coaches and influencers, and they've got big goals and big ambitions for what they want to create. When I'm helping someone like that, usually the first option is coaching. The best thing to do at the beginning is coaching. So we're going to dive into one specific business model, right? If you can look at, let's say, be a speaker, uh, getting brand deals as an influencer, writing a book and coaching. If we had to, those are four opportunities in front of you, right? Let's say. So what did I say? Being a speaker, <laughs> getting paid to speak, getting paid to do brand deals, getting paid to be an author and selling books. Um, even selling courses, your own materials and training and et cetera, and coaching. Those are, those are, you know, four or five different business models that you can go through. Perfect. At the beginning, which one is the best? What should you focus on? It should be coaching. Why? People don't like the idea of coaching because you're trading your time for money, right? I, I don't want to trade my time for money. Okay. Well, what are you doing right now? You know, you're at a job because if you're at a job, you're trading your time for money. If you have unlimited time to figure stuff out and you have, you have a giant bank account, then you could do something different. But if you need to start to make money to build this thing up, then yes, you're trading your time for money, but it's a faster path to get you out of your job and into your business full time. Where everything else takes a lot more time. Speaking takes an incredible amount of time. If you want to, if you want to be a paid speaker and, and get paid enough that it's actually meaningful, it takes a lot of time for you to get good at the skill as well as for you to build up momentum and a name in the industry. You have to do a lot of free speaking gigs before you ever get paid to do it. So if you have a horizon of years, awesome. But I'd rather you start get paid immediately while we work on the speaking career. You want to be an author and get paid to have a book? Cool. You can go and sell, publish a book right now if you wanted to. You can get it out. You'll make, you know, you can sell it to your friends and family, your your audience. You'll make a, a few bucks, but it's not going to be anything meaningful to get a paid deal or to have a, a significant. Even if you're going self publishing to make a lot of money off your book, you have to have a big audience to get the the deal with a, a publisher. They want you to have at least a hundred thousand followers. That's like your starting point to get in. So is that achievable? Of course. But now we're looking at 
years as a horizon as opposed to like this has to happen right away. So you're not getting paid right now off of your book. So if you're sitting there thinking, writing a book, creating a great manuscript, creating a great how-to guide, it's not going to be the thing that helps get you any kind of money anytime soon. And I want you to get paid because most people quit too soon on their ideas or they're trying to do a million different things at once, right? If you're trying to create a course, same thing. You have to build up enough momentum. You spend so much time making a course, creating the content, filming videos, or writing instruction manuals, or creating the PDFs, or whatever your course structure is. It takes so long to make the course, and then you have to go and market the course, and people don't know who you are yet. You don't have a brand yet. So could it work? Absolutely. Will it pay you more than coaching? Yes, absolutely. Most likely. It's way more easy to leverage that than coaching. But again, the timeline is so long and most people quit too soon on it. Where if you are coaching, you can make, you can make money right away. If, as long as you have something that can actually help people, right? If you're good at what you do, you, you know how to solve somebody's problem, you can make money as a coach right away. And yes, you're trading your time for money, but it's better than having a job. And it also gets you closer to your customers. At the very beginning, I'm, much, I'm a much bigger fan of selling a service than a product because it gets you closer to your customers. You get to know their problems, you know their uh, issues, you know what exactly they're struggling with, and you can help them solve it, which allows you to create a better book, a better course, a better product, because you've worked with enough people through the problem. And so most entrepreneurs fall into the category, I want to do all of it. Great, I want to be a speaker, I want to be an author, I want to create my course, I want to create my book, I want to be a coach, I want to do all of it. Awesome. You have a limited amount of time every week. To work on all five of those things at the same time means there's very little progress. How, if that's you and you've been writing your book, how long have you been writing your book for? You're like, wh when is it going to come out? What year? How many speaking gigs have you done in the past three months? Right? How much time has gone into your course? It's like we start and stop and start and stop because we're tackling so many different things because you wanna do it all and you wanna have income streams coming in like crazy. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's amazing, but there's a sequence. There's an order that if you can, as soon as possible, inside of your purpose, start to make money, start to build momentum, start to be able to bring on team to help you, it's so much easier, you can go so much further, you can go so much faster, you can <laughs> have so much less stress, you can have such a big impact that you just need to focus. You just need to focus. It's all possible. Your big dreams are possible. Go in order, figure out the sequence that will start to get you paid and focus. If you want to go brick by brick to make it stick, you have to pay attention to two critical pieces. The first is mindset. The second is action. You need both or you're going to give up on your goals. You know you're capable of something bigger, but you'll give up because you don't have these two simple things settled out. I'm going to show you how to fix them in this video. Step number one is mindset. What you think you're capable of is what you're actually capable of. If you think you can go off and do it, you're much more likely to do it. But if in your head, no matter how many skills and resources and people are telling you you're great, if in your head you don't believe you can do it, guess what's gonna happen? You're not gonna do it. And so you can apply brick by brick in a methodology that I call big why, little why. Your big why is the big reason why you're doing this thing. Why are you doing this thing? Your purpose comes from your pain. You got a big goal, big ambition. You want to change the world. You want to have a huge impact, right? You want to solve giant problems and change people's lives, right? That's your big why. You want to put a dent in the universe, right? You want to, you want to make an impact that's beyond your lifetime. It's a huge why. I'm waking up trying to solve the world's biggest problem. I don't think people believe in themselves enough. I'm trying to solve the world's biggest problem. I think that's the world's biggest problem. I'm never going to solve it. Even if I touch a billion people, I'm never going to solve it. That's the best. I think you should wake up and have a big why so big that you're never going to accomplish it. You're going to climb forever. You're going to be on your journey forever, forever, forever. It's the best. And oftentimes that big mission, that big vision you have is so motivating for you that it gets you out of bed, gets you motivated. Like, let's go. Here's what I'm trying to do. And it gets you pumped up. But sometimes the big picture is too big. Sometimes your big why, right, is big why, little why. Sometimes the big why is so big that you feel you can't do it, that you're not capable, that you don't have the skill sets, that you'll never be capable. And so you throw in the towel because it seems too big. 
And I get that too. You know, I'll look at me and my goals of, of solving the world's biggest problem and say, who am I to solve the world's biggest problem? Right? How, how, how am I capable of going off and doing that? And especially in my, I'm trying to think the last time I actually thought about that, especially in my earlier years as an entrepreneur, I really struggled with that. I, I'd go do a speaking gig and, and be so fired up and so motivated, like, man, I know I'm crushing it. I'm helping people so much. This is amazing. This is, this is oxygen. This is what I'm breathing. This is amazing. Thank you so much. And then I wake up the next day and be back to normal. I'm like, oh, can I do this? I don't know if I can do this because there's lack of momentum. And so that's where the little whys come in. And the little why is the reminder that what you do is important. I think it's, I think it's so important that you feel that the work that you do is important. If you woke up and felt every day that the work you do matters, means something, it's having an impact, man, the commitment level you're gonna have is so much greater than if you feel like nobody cares, what's the big deal, meh, right? So how do you remind yourself that the work you do on a daily basis is important to at least one person? That's the little why. The big why is the big vision, big dream, big, big mission, like where are you going? Awesome. The little why is you may not be able to help a billion people, but you can help one. Just reminding yourself that you helped one person. How I get that now is in my YouTube comments. Even now as part of my morning routine, I go to my YouTube comments and I just see what people are, are saying. And these are people, they're you, you know, amazing people who many, many of whom I've never met and maybe never will meet. Hopefully, hopefully I'll meet you. Come on my tour, meet me on tour. Probably I won't meet most of you. And to see the warmth and the love and the, and the comments that you guys are leaving makes me feel like this is why I do it. This is why it matters. This work matters. If I stop doing this, it would, it would mean something to people and they, you'd have to go somewhere else. Now, not so full of myself that you couldn't find another solution, but the work that I do matters and your comments feed me every day. I'm spoiled now that we get hundreds of comments and tons of DMs and lots of messages that come in daily. But when I was first getting started, I didn't get that many. When I talked about my early days as a speaker, I would speak and have a great time and then the next day wake up and feel like, what's the point? I would save, the thing that made the difference was I would save the messages that people sent me or emailed me or said at the end of one of my workshops. And I would put them together in a PowerPoint file. And I would watch that PowerPoint file every morning. That became part of my morning routine. This is when I really first started doing morning routines. This, is, this was such an important piece for me, was showing the messages from these people as a reminder every day that what I do makes a difference. And maybe I will never hit my billion, but these 18 people that I helped, I helped them. That was me, I did that, right? If you felt like you helped some people every single day, even if just remembering old people that you helped, every day as a reminder, it'll give you the ammunition, the momentum, the fuel that you need to keep going every day. So brick by brick, sometimes it's big why, right? It's the mindset. Sometimes it's the big why. Sometimes it's just, man, I'm gonna go crush the world. I'm so excited. I'm gonna go solve this giant problem and, and change humanity, right? Sometimes you feel like that and it's amazing and you go, you go, you use that boldness and energy to create something amazing. And sometimes you're gonna feel like, I can't do that big thing. And so you just look at the comments, you look at the, the one person that you helped or the five people that you helped or think back to people that you have helped in your life to remind yourself that you are valuable, that you make a difference, that the work you create is meaningful and to get the momentum and energy you need because for the most part, the biggest thing that you're missing is just momentum. And momentum comes from mindset. If you believe you can create great things, you can. So brick by brick starts with mindset. Big why and little why. So I said there were two things, right? There's mindset and then there's action. So step number two is action. So you, you think you can do something, then you have to go off and do it. Thinking it is not enough. You gotta do something, you gotta act on it. And brick by brick here is we often will plan this giant thing, right? You have this bold vision, this big idea, amazing, and you default into planning mode and you think I gotta do this and 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 this. And it's exciting and it's fulfilling. It's amazing to think in planning mode of what you can potentially build. But then you step back and look at that behemoth that you just built in your head or on paper, and you think, wow, that's really big. To do that, I need, I need venture capital, I need partners, I need, I need, I need a team, I need and all this, all this stuff that you need that you don't have. And then that becomes scary and then you don't act. And so I believe in what I call the 2% difference. The 2% difference is as soon as you come up with an idea, we're taking immediate action on the first 2%. So what we typically do is we'll plan to get to 100%. You'll plan to 100. You'll plan your, your entire vision out until it's complete, right? Then that becomes too scary. Instead of planning as your first step, planning is important, but it's not the first step. Your first step is action. Your first step is doing. Your first step is the first 2%. 
what is the first 2% version? So if your plan is to build the next YouTube channel, it's gonna dominate the world. I love it. It's easy to think, well, I need a camera person, I need a team, I need an editor, I need a script writer, I need, I need, I need, I need, I need, I need, I need. Great, awesome. 2% difference, take your phone, make a video today. Teach yourself to go from idea to action, idea to action. The smallest possible version. That little video you make from your phone, what difference it's gonna make? Not a lot in terms of output, but a ton in terms of momentum. A ton in terms of momentum. Most people just don't start. If you wanna lose weight, you wanna get in shape, the best thing you can do is do 10 push-ups right now. I had a person in one of my lives who said that their goal was to, to get in shape. Okay, great. Go do 10 push-ups right now. Don't, don't come back on into the live until you've done 10 push-ups. Are those 10 push-ups going to actually make that person lose 20 pounds? Of course not. But the difference between no push-ups and 10 push-ups is the whole game. Because if they do that 10 push-ups, they taught themselves to go from idea to action, idea to action, idea to action. That's the thing that's missing for most people. You have great ideas. I believe you have Michael Jordan level talent at something. You're not acting enough, not in a big enough way, not consistently enough. There's too much time planning and thinking and overanalyzing and worrying about judgment instead of just getting out there and actually doing. So planning is important. It's just not the first step. You burn all of your boldness and creativity and energy on the planning. You wake up the next day and you think, I can't go do that big, scary, crazy thing. Where instead, as soon as you get the idea, the best thing you can do with your energy, with your boldness, with your confidence in that moment, in that idea that you just created, is go do something about it. And teach yourself that you're the kind of person who comes up with great ideas, who trusts their great ideas, who doesn't overanalyze anymore and just puts them out into the world and builds momentum. That's going brick by brick. Because you made it this far in a video, I want to celebrate you. Most people start and don't finish. Most people never actually follow through. Most people say they want something, but they don't ever do the work to actually get it. But you are different. You are special. Believe Nation, you made it here all the way to the end and I love you. So it's a special celebration if you put a hashtag believe down in the comments below on this video, I will showcase you and celebrate you somewhere on the screen in a future video because you are awesome. If you want to watch another top 10 rules of Evan Carmichael, check out the video next to me. Continue to believe, I will see you there. Why do you get depressed after you accomplish a goal? You celebrate a goal for five minutes and then you're sad. Why is that? It's because you had the wrong goal. Your goal should not be to climb to the top of the mountain.